What's up, Gaming Nation? This is Brandon from Top10Gamer.com coming to at you with a look at my favorite power supplies in the $200, $100, and $50 category. And we're going to talk about power supply efficiency and whatever you need to know about power supplies and why I think you definitely should have a highly efficient power supply in that big, powerful gaming rig of yours. Okay, so first things first, we're going to talk about power supply efficiency. First of all, power supplies are graded. Uh, I'm sure you've all heard the term 80 plus. So a power supply can be 80 plus efficient uh, as standard, or it can be rated bronze, silver, gold, or platinum. Uh, obviously, the better quality the metal, the more efficiency in the power supply. Now, in order to achieve this rank, uh, testing is done at 20, 50, and 100% efficiency levels. So for example, a power supply that's rated 80 plus simply needs to achieve an 80% efficiency at 20, 50, and 100%, whereas a platinum one would need to achieve 90, 92%, and 89% at the same efficiency levels. Now, before I really understood power supplies and efficiency, I always wondered why manufacturers were selling those 1200 watt power supplies. Well, some of the reason is because gamers like you and me go over a little overboard with the triple GPU setups and overclocking and things like that. But one of the bigger reasons is that your power supply is actually most efficient when it's at 40 to 60% of its capacity. For example, let's say that my computer uh, needs 400 watts of power on average. Well, you might be thinking in your head, okay, well then the best thing for me to do to achieve one to 3% more efficiency would be to purchase an 800 watt power supply. When in all actuality, what you need to do is go slightly higher than that. Let's suppose I have an 80% efficient power supply. If I bought a power supply that was 1,000 watts, okay, I'm gonna lose 20% of that efficiency, then I'd have the power supply that I needed to run at about 50% capacity all of the time. Okay, so now the big question is, well, how much can you save if you're just uh, a little bit more efficient as far as your power supply is concerned? Now, we're gonna do a little bit of a calculation here, but I'm gonna do it the easy way. Now, we need to figure out, we need to make an assumption here about how much how much uh, wattage we're using on average, I'm gonna jump out and say 400 watts. Now that's kind of high because I have a high-end machine, uh, but I leave this machine on eight to 10 hours a day. I'm gonna say eight hours because it idles a lot of the time, but let's say we're leaving it on eight hours a day and we have 400 watts. Here's a formula for you to look at that will allow you to calculate that. Okay, so now that we have this formula, we're gonna calculate how much power we need on two levels if we're using a 90% efficient power supply versus the power we'd need if we were using a 70% efficient power supply. Okay, so the first thing that we need when you're looking at this formula is the total number of hours. Now we're gonna take 365 days times our eight hours and bam, we're gonna get 2,920 hours a year. That's the time that my computer operates each and every single year. We also need to know how many watts we need to draw from each one of these power supplies. If I have a 90% efficient power supply, then I need to draw 444.44 watts to achieve that 400 watts of power. Whereas if I have a 70% uh, efficient power supply, most uh, power supplies are at least this efficient. So if I have a 70% efficient power supply, then I need to draw 571.43 watts to achieve that 400 watts of average power. After all of this, we need to convert this to kilowatt hours in order to see how much we're spending each year. Now there's a really easy way to do this, this rapidtables.com. I'm gonna put a link in the description area below. You guys can do this and calculate your own power based on what you're using. But it's gonna run the numbers for me really quick. And so for the 90% efficient power supply, we're using 1,297.76 kilowatt hours per year. And for the 70% efficient power supply, we're using 1,668.58 kilowatt hours. Okay, so now that we have the total of kilowatt hours that we're using to run our gaming rig for one year, we need to know how much it costs per kilowatt hour. Now, if you go to the website that I have in the description below, eia.gov, you can find out how much you're currently paying in your state. The 2013 average right now is 12.4 cents, whereas in 2011, it was 11.94 cents. So, sorry, 2012, it was 11.94 cents. So as you can see, the average is going up and that trend continues. So over time, it's very cost effective, cost effective to go with something 
that is very efficient. Okay, so we're just gonna take the average uh, cost of a kilowatt hour in the United States right now, that's 12.4 cents, and we're gonna multiply this by the number of kilowatt hours. When we do this, the 90% efficient power supply comes out at about $160.92 a year, whereas the 70% efficient one comes out at $206.90 per year. This is a savings of about $46 in one year. Now, I've seen platinum power supplies available in about the $130 to $150 price range, so you can see how important it is and how cost-effective it is to, to get a highly efficient power supply. Okay, we got that out of the way, and I know what you're thinking, man, I'm just ready to get to the power supplies. I want to see the power supplies, but I just want to talk about how you can calculate your power supplies, your power that you need, because I get this question all of the time, and I think the best way to do this is to go to Thermal Takes Power Supply. Uh, calculator and I'll put a link in the description below for this if you're wondering exactly how much power the rig you're thinking of building takes. So first of all let's talk about the under $200 category. Now when we're looking at expensive power supplies you hear everyone talking about Japanese capacitors versus uh, Taiwanese capacitors versus whatever and you know ultimately to me I'm just paying attention to the warranty. If a, if a manufacturer is willing to warranty their product for five years or for seven years, that tells me it's a pretty good product. I, I, uh, I mean, I do look at things like Japanese capacitors, but sometimes I think that's a, a little bit overrated in terms of what you're paying for. I, hey, I don't want my capacitors to blow. I don't want to have problems with anything, but you know, I've never had problems with uh, mid-range power supplies in the past, and I doubt you'll have any problems going forward. For me, I'm gonna concern myself more with overall wattage and efficiency and how much the power supply costs. One power supply that you should look at in the under $200 range is the Rosewell Fortress series. You can get the 750 watt version for about $130. Uh, it's not a modular power supply, but it does come with a seven year warranty. So here, that's a great power supply. If you're willing to spend a little bit more, again, you'll save money over time. Okay, so three more power supplies that I have in the under $200 category for this month are the Corsair Professional Series 860 watt power supply. That's a modular power supply. It's also platinum. The PC Power and Cooling 750 watt silencer MK3, also a modular power supply. I believe that's gold, gold rated. And the Seasonic 850 watt 80 plus gold power supply, the X850, a really quality power supply that you should definitely look in if you're a serious power user. Okay, now to the under $100 category. In the under $100 category, I highly recommend you look at the OCZ Mod Extreme Pro Series uh, from OCZ. It, it's regularly on rebate. I have a couple of these power supplies. The 600 watt version seems to go on rebate for next to nothing. I think I've gotten them for 50 bucks before. Right now they're around $70. But uh, look for that rebate for that OCZ series. I believe it comes with uh, a five year warranty. Again, I've used it in a few rigs, never had a problem. Uh, another quality power supply in this range, if you're willing to spend just a little bit more for a little less wattage, would be the Seasonic G Series. Uh, it is an 80 plus gold power supply, and then you get that great Seasonic name and those great Japanese capacitors that'll last you a long time. Uh, and the last one I'm gonna mention is probably the most popular of this group. It's the Corsair Builder Series, the CX600. It's hard to go wrong when you're going with a Corsair power supply. Okay, if you have a pretty efficient machine like the recent HTPC build that I just built, then you may be thinking, hey, you know, I don't need that much, wa that much wattage. Uh, what's inexpensive in the under $50 category that would also be highly efficient? Um, I recommend you look at the Corsair Builder Series. The CX430 is super cheap at around $38. You can also go for the CX430M if you want something modular. That's what I'm actually using in my HTPC build, the modular version, just because I want to be able to remove those cables just to have that increased airflow in that case. You're already, you know, when you have an HTPC in an enclosed area, you're already worried about the heat dissipation. So I want as little heat as possible. And for that, I want to remove the cords and uh, I want an efficient power supply as well. Um, you could also take a look at the Antec Earthwatt series. That's probably the other really good competitor in this price range. The 300 watt, 380 watt, 80 plus power supply is around $42. And I believe there's um, other wattage uh, amounts available as well. Okay, so that's it for my power supply review. Hopefully that didn't bore you too bad. Uh, somebody said recently that I shake my head and I move my hands a lot. 
and, and maybe maybe I do, but what you don't know is when I put on when I put on my headset, I'm just kind of grooving a little bit. I'm like shaping to the music here while I'm making videos. So hopefully that's okay with you. If if I'm I'm just dancing along while I'm making these videos, I have a little bit of ADD, so I need to make sure I'm I'm kind of moving at all times. Okay, that's all for today. If you liked the video, please help me out by pressing that like button and subscribe. We need as many subscribers as possible here, and the more subscribers I get, the more I can put into these videos, the better they get. We've got some Battlefield 4 interviews coming up with professional gamers. We're constantly updating uh, the website with updated builds and hardware and things like that. I try to respond to every single question that you guys have. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.